I'm Sylvia Mbataru. I'm uh, the advocate of the High Court of Kenya. I work for the Kenya Human Rights Commission as a monitoring, uh, human rights monitoring uh, and response advisor. Yeah, so um, with regards to the case of the uh, South Sudan Fall, um, which is a case where uh, Kenyan citizens are being held uh, in a South Sudan um, jail after being tried, apparently, and a uh, case which is in appeal right now. Uh, and there have been issues as to the trial process and uh, the legality of their detention. Um, so generally, I'll speak to, uh, to about three things. Um, the first is the uh, obligation of state with regards to uh, human rights, um, and then a bit on the on the legality of the processes. Uh, so the first one is uh, with regards to the uh, obligations of state and human rights, the Constitution of Kenya provides that uh, the, the government or the state and every department of state has the mandate to respect, protect and fulfill the rights that are enshrined in the Constitution. These rights uh, for all Kenyans are found in uh, Chapter 4 of the Constitution. So. When we go back to the case of the South Sudan 4, who, uh, how we are now calling them the South Sudan 4, an issue as to um, the trial process has arisen uh, where it has been apparent and glaring that the trial may not have been uh, legal or due process was not followed. So the case here uh, with regards to the obligations of the state is um, the state has to protect the rights of citizens. And when we say protect, which is the word used in the constitution, is that the government must come in where we have non-state actors violating the rights of its citizens. So whether it's, the, uh, whether it's companies, whether it's other jurisdictions that are oppressing or violating the rights of Kenyan citizens, then it's the obligation of the Kenyan government to actually come in and protect its citizens from this kind of, uh, from this kind of treatment. We've heard that uh, uh, the cabinet secretary in charge of foreign affairs actually knows about this case. Uh, she has openly declared that she thinks they are innocent and they ha there is documentation to this effect. But what is she doing about it? What is her department doing about it? Why have they not taken the necessary measures to protect these, South, uh, the, these Kenyans in South Sudan whose rights are being whose rights are being uh, violated, meaning the, the government, by omission, is uh, breaching the rights of its own citizens by failing to protect them from another, from another jurisdiction. Uh, with regards to the trial process, I would, say, I would speak to two things. Um, the, uh, the Constitution, again, in, uh, the Kenyan Constitution provides for the right to a fair hearing. Uh, a fair hearing, there are general universal principles that, um, that provide as to what are the minimum levels for, for, for a fair hearing. Amongst this is the right to examine uh, witnesses, to face your accuser, the right to a, a, a fair hearing before a competent and independent uh, uh, tribunal, um, among others. So when, when a case arises where it is questionable as to the legality of the, of the, of the, of the trial that someone is undergoing, um, for example, being, uh, being uh, refused or denied the right to actually, uh, the right to present your case or the right to, uh, we, uh, to examine witnesses then at the very least, this does not meet the universal uh, minimum standards of a fair hearing. And although Sudan, the Sudan uh, legal framework may be different from the Kenyan legal framework, however, these minimum standards apply, apply universal, universally as per international human rights law. Um, third is the issue of bond, bond and bail, the right to actually uh, be able to, to have the option to, to pay off a bond or bail as your case is proceeding. There have been, um, we have heard that uh, the bail or bond was, was actually given too high. The minimum uh, standards, or the, although the issue of bail and bond is actually left to the discretion of a judge, the, the underlying principle is that it should not be too high, as such as to have an effect of actually denying a person uh, the option of bail and bond. So in this case of uh, the South Sudan, the, the, the bond or bail was, was set as, at a very ridiculous, about 14 million USD, which is a bit uh, ex ex excessive. So which has the effect of actually refusing or denying these people um, 
the bail the option of bail and bond so all you know if the Kenyan government actually knows this story and they know the kind of um, treatment and the kind of procedures that have been used on Kenyans in South Sudan and not just these four Kenyans but this is something that I know is affecting so many Kenyans in South Sudan what is the state doing about it either legally or through diplomatic channels what is the state doing about it at the end of the day it's a social contract between Kenyans and their government when they do their elections to elect that government for first and foremost to protect them from such incidences so um, the government has to be held to account on this they have to be held to account on this they have to tell us what they are doing and find ways to have these Kenyans either released or be, or be taken through a process that is fair and that meets international minimum standards.